the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. In that particular statement, you'll find and as a conjunction. It has a, uh, a punctuation there with it, signifying that it's two different events that culminate into the same major event taking place at different times. What will be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? He said, nations shall rise against nation. And we realize right now that we've got nation against nation all over the world. Everything from Iran, Afghanistan, Iraq, Kuwait, Russia, China, Germany. I mean, they're all against everybody. Uh, it's the free world against the socialized or communistic world right now all over the world. Uh, the Middle East is in derision right now, uh, one against another. The Palestinians against the Israelis. Uh, the Iranians against the Israelis. Uh, we are here, so that's nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Uh, do we realize right now what's going on with social unrest in the United States of America is kingdom against kingdom. That's the same thing that's going on in Israel. Palestine is a kingdom. Israel is a kingdom. Kingdom against kingdom. Somebody shake your head like this. Amen. Pestilence. Pestilence is disease. Has anybody heard of something called COVID-19? I mean, you have, I assume. Yeah. Pestilence in diverse places. That's about as diverse as you can get right now. There's not been pestilence in diverse places in your lifetime like it's going on right now. And that's just, that's just what's focusing our attention. I mean, there's more people dying from cancer than COVID-19. That's a pestilence. And a lot of other things that's going on. Uh, heart failure is at a higher rate than COVID-19. More people die of heart attacks than COVID-19. Anyway, I mean, do you realize that COVID-19 has a 1.3% mortality rate? That means that there's 98.7% uh, of people that get it that get better. That's pretty good. That's a better chance than you get home safe today. I'm not kidding you, it's real, it's out there, people are suffering for it. I've got real good friends right now that's in the hospital with it. It's real. But it's prophecy. It's what Jesus said, pestilence and earthquakes. How many knows how many earthquakes hit the United States of America this week alone? Or you count on both your fingers and your fingers. Okay? I don't know. You say, why? Because I didn't check the seismologist report today, so I really don't know how many hit this week. But a bunch. Men's hearts failing them for fear and looking after things that are coming on the world. That's not talking about cardiac arrest. That's talking about you just saying, well, I don't know where to go on vacation or not. I just ain't got the heart because I don't know what I'm going to face. I don't know where to go buy a new truck or not because I don't know what I'm going to face. I don't know where to do this. I mean, men's hearts are failing. They don't, I mean, that's what it's talking about right there. That's what men's hearts fell in there for fear and looking after the things that's coming on the world. That don't mean you're going to be scared to have a heart attack. That means you ain't got the heart to do anything. Now I just shared with you several prophecies of the Word of God that you've seen firsthand that says, Jesus, they said, Jesus, what's going to be the sign of life coming into the end of the world? Here it is. I mean, just ask the blind man. He saw it all. <laughs> Amen. Right now, we're seeing civil unrest all over the world. Never in your lifetime have you seen the public of China raising up against the government of China, but they are right now. I mean, I know you saw Tiananmen Square and all that raising up against communism and socialism. They just took tanks and run over. Some of you did. Do you remember Tiananmen Square? Okay. They took care of it, but now they can't take care of it. Back in the out, Britain, the United Kingdom, something come up. Queen says, beheaded. And they did. That ended that. They yeah. yeah. Now the United States, Portland, Oregon, suing the federal government because it sent troops in to stop them from demolishing the city. Now they're suing Homeland Security. 
Because if we don't want this, just let them write. Okay? He said, Brother Wayne said, this prophecy being fulfilled right before our eyes, civil unrest. Amen. Civil unrest. Let me throw some things out at you right quick. If there's ever been anybody that had a right to, project, to, to, uh, to protest, it's the Jewish people and the Native American. Native Americans make up 0.9% of the United States population. Alaskans make up 0.17. Now, if there's ever been a minority, that's a minority. The blacks make up 17%. Right. You didn't get it. You didn't get it. 17%. So who's a minority? Uh, but we don't have equal rights. Well, tell Dr. Martin Luther King that he don't have equal educational rights. How did he get his doctorate? Right. Okay, come on. Yeah. We ain't got the right to education. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm not slamming the man. I'm just saying, go tell him. Go tell Colin Powell. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And the list goes on. I can go right down the line. Yeah, sir. Don't feed me this garbage. I don't need swap. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay? Yeah. So how should the process be? Why'd you say that you, preacher? Does anybody know how the United States of America was found? Oh, come on. Help me. There was a man by the name of Christopher Columbus, 1492, who sailed the ocean blue. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue? Ferdinand and Isabella, queen and king, if you want to put it that way. Started the revolt called the Spanish Inquisition. They overtook prominent Jewish businesses, confiscated their goods and their money, and funded Christopher Columbus's voyage. So you can thank a Jew today that you're living in the land of the free and the home of the brave. Because it was Jewish monies through Ferdinand and Isabella that funded Columbus's. You say, brother, what's this got to do with it? Give me a minute, don't you? Don't get ahead. That funded the voyage of Christopher Columbus, and you can go study this in history. Don't cost you. That funded Columbus's journey to the United States of America. But you know what's amazing? That their money, if there's anybody that ever had the right to stand up and say, no, wait a minute, this land is our land. It seems like it would be the people that uh, bought the privilege to give you. Yeah. Are the people, my brother, that was already here? Yeah. I mean, instead of everybody having to come through Ellis Island and being approved, for citizenship of the United States through the federal government, I think the Lene Lake tribe or the Delaware tribe of the American Indians should be up there saying who can come to their land and who can't come to their land. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Lord, I mean, you want to do it right? Let's do it right. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Yeah, that's right. Let's do it right. And now we've got civil unrest. Why are we having civil unrest? Because we don't have right. Because somebody wanted to catch and punish a criminal. But I've got a Second Amendment right. Anybody want to stand? Or First Amendment right? I've got a Second Amendment right too. Praise God. Amen. 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 Second Amendment right. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. The First Amendment. Gives us the right. He said, Brother, why are you doing this? Ain't this Sunday school ain't we supposed to learn things? Yeah. Amen. Amen. First Amendment right gives you freedom of speech. Somebody say amen. amen. Gives you freedom of religion. Amen. That's what he says. Freedom of religion. Gives you a right to the freedom of peaceful assembly. So they said, we got a right. You ain't got a right to get out here and tear down statues and burn buildings. Right. Not by the Constitution. Right. Right. A right of peaceful assembly. And the right to petition 
government through that peaceful assembly without the fear of redress. That's what your First Amendment says. Nowhere in there do I find that they're practicing the rights of First Amendment. It's going on at you. You say, well, brother, why is it happening? Because Jesus said that the kingdom rise against kingdom. And we're seeing prophecy without basis come full circle in our generation. I didn't mean, I didn't mean to bore you. Amen. But that's just fact. How can what's going on right now happen whenever there's no basis, no right, and no law that permits it? It's a spirit of Antichrist fulfilling the scriptures that's coming to place in our nation today. And Jesus said, when you see these things begin to come to pass, Does everybody get that? Somebody said you can't hear it. Can you see? He said, look up. And I mean, I can give you a lot of things, but I'm not going to bore you to death with what's going on. I'm just a guy that's got to find out. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, but that's just me. Some comes up, brother, I've got to say, why? Some comes up, I've got to figure it out. That's just me. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I just... And so if he said it's going to happen, I've got to find out why is it happening. I want to tell you why it's happening. Now the Bible tells us that there's a spirit of blindness that comes with this. And that's exactly what's happening in the world today. There's a spirit of blindness in our world today. There's a spirit of deceit in our world today that's causing all of this to take place. You say, brother, why is that? Well, why in the world are they going out here and, and looting people of their own color of shops and killing them? I mean, come on, I thought black lives matter. You said, brother, you against them, don't guess what's going on. Amen. 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 And they charge the white couple right now with standing their ground whenever they had their weapons outside their home. I know they had a bad, bad background, but that's all right. They just standing on their own property, saying a bunch of people that know they've broken down the security gate, come into the, into the uh, house and go, don't, don't come on my property. You know, mess my house up. Right. Now, what happens whenever these have a right to improperly observe the First Amendment and these don't have a right to properly observe the second? Yeah. 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 Come on, help me. Yeah. You say you're on a soapbox. Yeah, but I'm getting biblical in just a minute. Leave me alone. I'm on a soapbox. Yeah, I am. It's my soapbox. <laughs> Amen. And I've got four corners on a piece of property up on Oxford Road. You best be a friend or invited if you come. Don't come to tire my stuff up. Amen. Facebook, YouTube, I don't care. That's my stand. I do have a constitution. Amen. To peaceful protest. And I stay peaceful until you force me otherwise. Amen. Amen. And it don't say peaceful protest. It says peaceful petition, not protest. So they reworded it. Right. And you say, well, they reworded it, so it means the same thing. No, it don't. You're going to take a corrupt Bible because they reworded it and say, it's all right, do you? Uh, Amen. Amen. All right, let's leave that alone. Okay, Cameron? Amen. I, I, I will. I will. I honestly will for a day or two. All right? Probably no longer than that, but I will for a day or two. All right. Uh, let's go to the Word of God this morning. And um, that didn't cost you anything, by the way. Amen. Uh, the offering that they took up at Sunday School wasn't for you. Okay. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, we, uh, we see a lot of things that's, uh, that's taking place in our world today. <clears throat> and it's all biblical is what I'm trying to get you to understand. And it's things that Jesus told us that would prevent, in other words, not hinder, but come before His return. And he said, when you see these things, you know, you, you make, make sure you've got your lamp shred and burning your life free from sin because I'm coming. Right. It ain't no time to play around sin. Right. I mean, can I? Lord help. Yeah. 
You pray for all the just committed. I want to ask you a question. Why in the world there's $142 in coins change for every citizen of the United States? Brother, what's your $142 worth of change? So look at me, Red. That's why right. she go study it. There's $142 worth of change. <laughs> you 
I'll bless. Those that curse you, I'll curse. And I think the only reason that we're still standing, the strongest we're standing, is because of the blessings that the United States of America has given and is given to Israel. Amen. But we studied this, and we said that there was going to be a man. We come to the point that there was going to be a man that was going to rise up, which the Bible calls the son of perdition, or, or the son of appointment is what it really means. So this person has an appointment. And how do you know he has an appointment? Well, it coincides with the book of Daniel because it says at his time. At his time. That means the appointment. So he's the son of appointment, or the son of perdition. You say, preacher, do you believe that the man of sin, the what we call antichrist, is alive and well in the world today? I really do. Because I don't feel like that we could be this close to the fulfillment of all prophecy regarding the church without that man of sin actually being somewhere on the scene. Did you realize everything that's going on in our world today is taking place by the emphasis of an unseen source? The writing and the violence that's going on in our nation today is not because a black man stood up somewhere and said, I've been violent. It's because there's organized crime behind what's going on. Amen. 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 A major part of it is being funded by a man that isn't you actually have said by the name of George Soros. You can go study. And all his wealth and billions is going to corrupt the world. He's the cause of the economic fall in Greece alone. Amen. You actually got people of that power that's existing in the world today, and all they do is turn a key, push a button, hand out money, Amen. and corruption takes place. Yeah. Yeah. It's happening. Yeah. So people say, well, what about a man of sin? Do you realize that there are people of sin right now that's causing everything in our world that's going on to go on? And so if they're causing everything to go on, then what happens if they pull a man up and say, all right? I'll tell you what now, we're going to turn the buttons off and we want you to stand up with a solution. And there will be a man of sin that will stand up with a solution, amen, at the appointment of the authority of the world. You say, how do you know? Because he'll worship the God of forces according to Daniel. Yes. The God of forces, remember that. You go in and study what it's going to be. So what they're going to do, these people that are causing so much world corruption right now, what they're going to do is they're going to turn it off, it's going to subside, there's going to be a man that's going to stand up with an answer. That man that's going to stand up with an answer has one thing in mind, he wants to destroy Israel. Amen. Amen. Well, brother, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to arm myself, I'm going to get ready, I'm going to take all these courses, and when they come, I'll fight. Help yourself, you can't violate the word of God, it's going to happen anyhow. So you say, brother, what are you going to do? Keep on praying just like I do every day. Even so, Lord Jesus, come quick. Amen. 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 Because that's the only hope we got. But the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation, let me get off the soap box. Somebody say, praise God. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelation, chapter number 13, verses 16 through 18. Let's look at this man. We'll look at the characteristics of this man. The Bible tells us that he caused all those small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in the right hand or in the forehead, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that hath the mark or the name of the, uh, of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. Now what it is, it is the number that a man can try. It is a number that a man said you had to have. It's a number that a man in his ingenious ideas come up with and said this is the way it's got to be. What's the date? Huh? 19. I knew I forgot to roll my watch back. The fall. Tomorrow. You can't buy, sell, or trade at Walmart unless you go to Mexico. Well, they'll not put that off on me. Well, drink sandy water and don't go get your cooking, amen, because you won't be able to get it out of Walmart that much. Yeah. 
And he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in the right hand or in the forehead. And that no man, when I buy or sell, save he that hath the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. And people are saying, well, I'll just not do it. Bring them our master on. I'm not saying that. I'll put a mask on and respect it. I'm not that naive. I don't want to draw a line. Well, look at me like I've compromised. If that's compromised to you, I've compromised. I respect everybody to that extent. I mean, my, my feeling really is this. If you want to wear a mask to keep me from condemning you or, or contaminating you, wear your mask. Because if you've got your mask on, I know that one, it ain't going to contaminate you. Amen? <laughs> I mean, that is actually the freedom of being a person that's a citizen of the United States of America. But out of respect, I don't mind doing it because it's over my mouth and there's a lot of things that people need over their mouth anyway. <laughs> anyway, I mean, some of them need real thick things over their mouth. Somebody say amen. <laughs> anyway, I mean, I don't want to draw the line. I mean, I, I respect people and I respect their rights, but I'm not trying to my rights either. Amen. But listen to me now. We say it ain't going to happen. Look at the Word. China's wearing masks. Russia's wearing masks. The United States is wearing masks. Australia's wearing masks. The United Kingdom's wearing masks. They're saying you can't come in by and say if you don't have a mask on. That's just one more step. You say, well, what are we going to do if it comes down to the market? And, and what are we going to do then? We're going to refuse. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm going to be someone's else. I was talking about the last two Sundays. Last two Sundays, I just told you, I, I'm not going to be here for that long. It's going to be real close. Because the Bible says at that time, the Lord's at that least to butt up against. So at that time, those, according to Daniel, those whose names are written in the book will be delivered. Can somebody say hallelujah just once more? So we're going to come to the edge of it, brother. We're going to be right up against it. Well, we get right up against it and... I don't know how many of you remember John Reno or not. John Reno was Attorney General for the United States under the Clinton administration. She got fed up with Bible thumping people saying we've got rights as Christians. And she said, it would be a wonderful society if we could get rid of all the Bibles and all the Christians. When I heard that on the news, I said, honey, that's not you really. You're going to get your way. <laughs> hey, but you're going to get your way. Lord help me. But did I read that right? Does everybody catch what I'm saying? The value of currency can't buy, sell, unless. Does anybody see a parallel? Okay. Can anybody see the signs? I mean, we're back. We're back. Praise God. You say, does it not trouble you, brother? Well, it kind of bothers me a little bit, but no, I got peace. It kind of bothers me a little bit. Sure it does. You say, why? Because I don't like to see this nation fall. I knew what it used to be whenever we was the land of the free and the home of the brave. I know what this nation was before Vietnam. Some of you don't get it. Some of you wasn't there. And some of you don't know what I'm talking about. You ain't got time for me to share with you about the decline of this nation from the 60s to now. But I was there. I said the decline of this nation from the 60s to now. That's right. I mean, what, what, what should have happened first off? What should have happened whenever they started spitting on the troops who come back to Vietnam because they were doing their country a service and they started spitting on them and burning the flight, they should have picked them up and sent them over there. That's right. That's right. I said they should have picked him up and said, them over there. That's the same thing I said about the three, actually 6% of the populace right now is controlling the United States of 
wherever. You got 3% gay, lesbian, homosexual. 3% of the population. There's only 3% or less of the black population that's causing this disturbance. That makes 6%. I said out there uh, uh, a while ago, I said, what we need to do, we need to get that 6% up, send them to the mountainous regions of Mexico where ain't nobody but the Indians live, let them deal with the drug cartel, and leave us 94% along the live with them. Amen. 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 How in the world can 6% of the populace cause so much disturbance? That's right. Gays and lesbians changing laws. They didn't take 75% vote in Congress and Senate to get over, and they're changing it with 3% population. Something's wrong with this picture. Yeah, that's right. You say, well, what's wrong with this picture? As it was in the days of what? Can somebody give me an amen? amen. amen. I mean, give me the 6% is problem. And let the other 94% of us live in peace. Anyway, I know I'm giving you a social justice lesson and sympathy. If you took civics whenever you went to school, you'd understand this. <laughs> Amen. The Bible tells us that it's a number of commandments. Look at Daniel chapter 19, verse number 14. Am I boring you? Yes, sir. I don't mean to if I am. Sometimes I just get up, get off on kicks. And my wife will tell you. Amen. <laughs> You gotta understand, pray for her. She has to put up with me. <laughs> I mean, that's bad. She has to put up with me. I love her. That's right. <laughs> she loves me too. You say, how do you know that? She did. She would put up with me. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. <clears throat> Don't worry, if I say anything wrong, she addresses me. Amen. You know, it's one of those things, you know, the Bible says, we keep silence in the church, she does. <laughs> I love you, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Some of you may not say I want you to notice we've said, and we're trying to emphasize the fact that there's going to come a catching boy in the church. And catching the way of the church is going to come at a time that we butt up against what we're seeing. Sister Blake, by four weeks, when we get right to the edge of it, in other words, when you get to where you feel it, when you get to where you're rubbing the elbows with it, okay? We didn't have it. Uh, how do you know that? But my faith is in the Word of God, and that's what I found in the book. I said, that's what I found in the book. Amen. And the tribulation period that's coming, let me show you right quick. Let me give you a couple of things to look at right quick and then I'll go out of the way. Daniel chapter number 10, verse number 14. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall. Somebody tell me what that next one is. Thy people. So that means what's fixing to happen is for a specific group of people. What shall be followed by people? Can I give an amen? amen? Jeremiah chapter number 30. And you go home and read this. Jeremiah chapter number 30. And verse number 7. He talks about the restoration of the land. And after the restoration of the land, then he talks about Tilbalt that's going to come. How many of you know Israel's been restored? So it's fit perfectly in prophecy. Same thing with Ezekiel. Ezekiel covers the same account, a restoration of Israel, dry bones being raised, and then you find 38 and 39 in Ezekiel, you'll find the, all the armies coming together against Israel. All these armies that Ezekiel mentions are in coalition right now. Never before in history have all these armies been in coalition that Ezekiel mentions. So you have the restoration of Israel and a coalition of armies coming against Israel for battle. Look at what it says right here, chapter number 30 and verse number 7. Alas, for that great day, so that none is like it. What did Daniel say? They such as has never been. What did Jesus say? And they such as has never been. Now what's Jeremiah say? And they such as has never been. So that none is like it. It is even the time of 
Jacob's trouble. Now what happens? Sister Worth, what happens whenever you spell somebody's name put an apostrophe and an S on it? Because S shows ownership. This trouble that's coming belongs to Israel. I look for the whole trips to show that. <laughs> this time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved, not from it, but out of it. Now I want to show you in days to come how that Israel is going to be saved out of tribulation. Not from tribulation, not after tribulation, but out of tribulation. It's in the Bible. So they'll be saved out of it. Look at what the Bible says in Luke chapter number 21, verses 22. And I know I've read some of these scriptures before. Luke chapter number 21. Give me two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, give me a couple more minutes. Chapter number 21 of the blue. And the Bible says this, 22 and 23. It says, For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. These be the day of vengeance. The day of vengeance. Now, we don't have time to cover that this morning, but we will if God would help us. And all things may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land, specific land, and wrath upon this people. A specific land and a specific people. So all this vengeance and all these things that are going to come to place are going to be on a specific land and a specific people. The Bible tells us in Daniel 9, 27, Daniel 9, 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice of the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So he's going to make a covenant with the people for one week. So it's this land, this people, and he's going to make a covenant for one week. But in the midst, he's going to violate that covenant. Daniel 12. Daniel 12. Verse 7. And the Bible says this. And I heard a man clothed the linen which was upon the waters of the river. When he held up the right, his right hand and his left hand to heaven, and swore by him that liveth forever and ever, that it shall be for time, times, and a half. Three and a half years. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, who's he talking about? Israel. All these things shall be finished. When he's, when he's accomplished scattering the power of Israel, it's going to be scattered again according to the word of God. Okay? All right. Chapter number 12 and verse number 11. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, the abomination that make a desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. That's sixteen days less than three and a half years. So he said in the midst of this he's going to break the covenant. We'll deal with that. How, how I feel that he breaks the covenant. Can I give you a couple or three more? I don't think I've made it three minutes yet. You say yeah, you made it five. Well, I don't think so. But anyhow, I'll give you this a little bit. I've got to get to this. Everybody will understand. I ain't seen nobody be good in the door since he's through yet. Matthew chapter number 24, verse number 15. Matthew chapter number 24, verse number 15. Look what the Word of God says. Jesus made a reference in chapter number 24 in the book of Matthew to what Daniel had to say. So therefore, he's upholding what Daniel had to say in verse number 15. He said, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, and so readeth, let him understand that them which are in Judea, Flee into the mountains. Then which are in Judea, a specific land. He said this is going to happen to a specific land. Then it's in Judea, let them flee into the mountains. Now I'll show you what the Bible tells us that God's going to hide in the wilderness. He said, let them flee into the mountains. Okay? The Bible tells us the same thing basically in, in Mark chapter number 13, verse number 14. And the Bible tells us in chapter number 12 of the book of Revelation that it's three and a half years, time, time, and a half time. 
amount of your attention this morning. Pray it's going to help to you. If I got on the soapbox and got on the nerve and getting on the soapbox, I'm sorry. I apologize for that. But I think it's all in a tribute to the last day that we're living in. Everything that's happened. And you know, if we believe that what's happening is a tribute to the last day of prophecy, we need to get right. And stay right. Because you see, the Bible said, in a day as you think not, something ain't coming. Everything's going to be going wrong this morning. Two in the wheel, two in the bed, two in the field. Everything's going to be going wrong this morning. We're fixing to get back to a state of normality. I mean, you're still going to have a COVID-19 to deal with, but you know what they're going to say? Has anybody heard the statement from the governors and the senators and the congress and the president that said, we've got to get back to a certain state of normality? Yeah. Yes. I wonder if he's just prophesying and don't know it. We've got to get back to a certain state of normalcy. We've got, to get, we've got to get our lives back on track. Well, I'm seeing you. I'm seeing you. I don't care to you. I'm scared to death, but excited. I pray you receive something from the teaching this morning. And enjoy to stand before you. God bless you. Oh, if you have any specific things that you want to address that's been, that sparks your attention from yeah, these teachings, then please tell me. I, I, I'm happy. I'm happy to address any question that you might have. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay.